Welcome to the Fred Rubino Podcast. It's July 30th, 2023. In case you're watching this in the distant future. Ooh, it's Freddie Rubino. Look how young I used to look. Anyway, uh, we're going to talk about two movies out tonight that are red, red hot. Uh, I'm going to drink some Bacardi rum, coconut rum. Let me just tell you a little bit reason why. Okay? Because I go to the liquor store. And my wife sees me going to the liquor store. She goes, give me something. Because that's how she talks. Anyway, she says, give me some. I go, all right, what would you like? She goes, give me the coconut rum. I like coconut rum. What do you mean you like coconut rum? I, I've fucking never seen you drink coconut rum. I know you're 15, I know you're 50, 60 years. Okay? So, I go, I get the rum. I go, what a Bacardi coconut rum. She's like, that's not the rum I like. That's not the rum I like. You don't even fucking drink rum. Okay? Then she says, I like the, uh, I forget what, what fucking brand. She goes, don't you remember we drank coconut rum on our honeymoon? Do you fucking think I remember what cocktail I had 50 fucking years ago? Holy shit, these women don't fucking think of nothing. Nothing! Anyway, this is the whole thing about women tonight, okay? It's the Oppenheimer movie and it's the Barbie movie, okay? And here's to Coconut Rum. Ah, now, go to fredrubino.com and get tickets to Jersey this Saturday. Uh... I'll be at a Domenico's restaurant in Long Island, my only Long Island appearance, August 19th. Dinner, show, tip, everything included. Come come to see a great show. Also, all my shows in Florida coming up. So go to fredrubino.com. One word, all you fucking people my age who don't know how to put it in and get some lawyer in Montana. That's not my name. It's one Word, fredrubino.com. Okay, so, two big movies this week came out. Everybody's talking about it. It's even like a battle of the sexes, you know? So the first one I'm going to talk about is Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer is a, I believe he's a German-American. Born in the United States, American citizen. Oppenheimer, they hire him to build the atomic bomb. I believe he's German-American. I believe his parents were German. Okay, that's the difference between Germans and Italians, okay? German, he's gonna fucking save the world with his unbelievable knowledge and technology. Italian, you get an Italian guy who's a fucking genius in electronics and, and all kinds of things. He's home trying to get illegal cable. He's trying to fucking put a few diodes and cathodes together and fucking get an illegal cable box. That's his genius. Okay? How to make a, 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 a debit card. Where this, is, this is what Italians will do. How to jump out your electric meter. That's what our genius is. Okay? Which, by the way, it might not be saving the world, but you teach a poor person to jump out their electric meter, you fucking save that family. So, let me just give a my props out to all my Italian geniuses out there. So, we got Oppenheimer. This guy, let, let me just tell you one thing. It's World War II. Fucking atrocities going on all over the world. Atrocities like you've never heard of. The Russians are fucking running wild. They're trying, they're getting defeated. The Germans are killing millions of Jews. Millions of people. The Russians are killing millions of people. Germany, Japan, Italy get together. They're looking to develop the atomic bomb so that they can wipe out England, wipe out the United States, take the rest and enslave them and have a new world order. So they call Oppenheimer. Could you imagine? No one calls me. No one. My fucking kids don't call me if they if they want to be saved and they're on the side of the highway. They don't. So, how fucking unbelievable is this guy? Why don't we have Oppenheimer Day? 
in this country. This fucking guy, they called him to save the world. To beat them at the at the thing. This guy's a fucking man. Not for nothing. No? Huh? What? Yeah? Fucking Oppenheimer, they call. Good guy. Good guy. Anyway, as you could imagine, this is life or death situation here. Oppenheimer, you gotta fucking do this. Okay. Gets his, gets his notebook out. No computers. Maybe a calculator. Brr, that's it. This guy's doing the job. Um, so they call him. And he is trying to develop the bomb. Uh, the uh, Russians. Uh, the Russians are in it. The Russians are fucking. They're freezing to death in Eastern Europe. The Nazis are trying to get it as quickly as they can. And use it. Even if they experiment on it uh, with, over England or whatever. This is life or death situation right here. Now, in the movie, I'm not going to go through the whole fucking movie. I'm not going to give you a history lesson. All I'm going to say is, in the movie, Oppenheimer has a wife. Okay? His wife in the movie is pissed off at him. It's fucking Oppenheimer. I don't even know his first name. Uh, Alexa, what's Oppenheimer's first name? Alexa, what's Oppenheimer's first name? Uh, fucking, I can't even get Alexa to fucking... Echo. Alexa. What's Oppenheimer's first name? J. Robert Oppenheimer's given name is Robert. Robert. J. Robert? What the fuck? What, what's the J for? Anyway, I'm not gonna say. Robert. Hey, look at Robert. He's not. What is he doing? So his wife in the movie is having a hard time because he's never home and she's gotta raise the kid by herself. She can't handle it. She takes to the bottle. She becomes an alcoholic. What the fuck do you think your husband's doing? You can't raise one fucking kid. One fucking kid. My mother raised three kids in the Lower East Side, the ghetto, Italian ghetto of Manhattan. It was a six-story walk-up. Six stories, no elevator. She went shopping. Had me in the carriage, my other brother a toddler, my other brother a little bit bigger, and walked with the fucking groceries or with whatever she bought for the day. Oh, six flights with three kids, the stroller, the groceries. Up. My mother was working, and she was taking care of the kids. This fucking Oppenheimer's wife. By the way, I lived in the fucking Italian ghetto, okay? It wasn't the lap of luxury. We shared a bathroom. The bathroom was in the hallway, okay? This is Manhattan, the biggest city in the world. We shared a bathroom in the hallway. There was a tub in the sink in our house, but in the hallway was where you took your shit. And you shared it with another family who lived on the sixth floor. Fucking floor. But Mrs. Oppenheimer, who lives in a fucking estate, whose husband is the most important fucking guy in the world, couldn't, couldn't make it, couldn't raise this fucking kid. How big was this kid? See, I want to see the second movie. How big fucking Oppenheimer's kid was. That kid sounds like a real fuck, huh? Holy shit. That little fucking Oppenheimer. I can see it. The, 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 they're saying, yeah, we won the war, but how about that fucking Oppenheimer kid? What a prick, that kid. What a loud my dang in my matzo. Holy shit. You couldn't handle one kid. And here's the thing. This guy's not out fucking bowling. He's not out hunting with the boys. He's not out trick. He's developing the fucking top secret atomic bomb. He's the most important person in the fucking Western Hemisphere. And Mrs. Hopper and I 
I was fucking crying. Come home, Robin. What the fuck? Unbelievable. I ruined the whole fucking movie for me. I'm like, this bitch. Now she's a drunk. How about you just a drunk and you just blamed it on the kid? Which I'm not letting the kid off the hook. I still think the kid's a little prick. He needed a fucking backhander. He needed the wooden spoon. So, this is Mrs. Oppenheimer. One fucking kid. Holy shit. How many Italian families the mother raised them all? With nothing. Cooking out of the basement. I'm sure if Mrs. Oppenheimer went to the Department of Defense or the military and said, Look, I need a hand. Uh, grab a couple of those fucking uh, migrants that are running across Los Alamos and have them fucking help me with the kid. I'm sure they would have had her wash done, her fucking house cleaned. They would have fucking watched that little prick kid of hers. They would have helped her. But no. She's ragging on Robin Oppenheimer. I gotta say, let me just say one thing. This fucking CIA, they whacked the president. They whacked Kennedy. They couldn't have fucking whacked Mrs. Oppenheimer. You know what I'm saying? Just to give the guy a break. You know? She's got the little martini, little fucking radioactive olive. In her martini, boom, she's gone. Put the little fucking kid in boarding school. Let's get back to the bomb. Okay, so that's 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 how I saw that fucking movie. The Mrs. Oppenheimer was a bitch. And then I started to think about it. I'm like, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm saying, maybe... Just maybe the world was saved. We got the bomb first. Of course, we know we got the bomb first, right? We dropped it on the Japs, right? And let me tell you something. I said this on Twitter. People are going, oh, it's a shame what they did with that bomb. Uh, why don't they, in the movie, they should have talked about the victims. They didn't have a voice. They were just fucking pulverized. They didn't have a voice. You know when they had a voice? When they fucking bombed Pearl Harbor. That's revenge. The same thing we should have fucking did to Afghanistan. We did to Japan. We dropped two on them. Not once. Twice. Boom. Boom. Okay? Uh, you forget it? You forget how many fucking people you killed in Pearl Harbor? Worst attack in U.S. history? And now you're crying that we got even? The oh, fuck out of here. Okay, here's the thing. Maybe, just maybe, the reason why Oppenheimer developed the bomb first was because his wife was a bitch. And then I started thinking, wow, if it wasn't for her being the miserable crybaby drunken bitch that she was, we wouldn't be here. They would have won the war to Nazis. We'd be dead or enslaved because of her. How, you might ask. Freddie, how do you come to that conclusion after you just dragged it through the mud? I didn't drag it through the mud. I might have pulled the hair a little, but that's it. Let me tell you. The Japs and the Germans were, were watching and, and, and Italians were all trying to develop the bomb, right? You think the Nazi scientist? The Nazi scientist had the run of everything. You think his wife made a peep? His wife, that fucking German scientist wife, shut him out. He runs to Hitler, she gets fucking massaged. He could do anything. The wife didn't even ask. Boop. She was like, beep. The Italian? You think Italian wife ever said nothing in Italy? He went out there. He said, Mussolini needs me. Keep your fucking mouth shut. And she just, whoop. She made a little pasta, and she kept her mouth shut. She was no problem. The German wife, no problem. The Japanese, they're not even allowed to talk to their husbands today. Never mind back then. So, they could do whatever they want. The German guy goes out to build the bomb. He's got his cigarette. You ever see how they smoked it in the World War II movies? Like this. Like this. Like this. 
Let's, and they would drink and they would stay out and they're like, we're building the bar. They had a couple of, they could whore around. They're whoring and everything. You know, these Italian fucking scientists, they're whoring and drinking. They had it all. But not Oppenheimer. Op and, and so some days they didn't work on the bump. Some days they went home and they fucking hung out and they did this and they went home and they ate and they went to the best restaurants. But not Oppenheimer because Oppenheimer's wife was a bitch. So Oppenheimer said, I'm going to work. I'm working all fucking night. I don't want to go home. Last thing I want to do is go home to that fucking souse. So what did Oppenheimer do? He worked 20 hour days. They're like, Oppenheimer, you could go home now. Fuck that. Let's get some more radiation out. Let's fucking, let's put some radiation in that fucking mouse. Let's see what happens. I ain't going home to that. And that's why behind every successful, amazing man is a wife that's breaking his fucking Balls and keeping him focused on what he's supposed to do. So, as it turns out, when I got home, I realized Mrs. Oppenheimer saved the world. By being a bitch. You don't want to go home. I'll fucking sleep in the laboratory. Let's take two hours sleep. Let's do it again. Come on, Oppenheimer. I'm fucking tired. Fuck you. Hmm? Mrs. Oppenheimer, the world salutes you. See, drunken wives. Eh, there's something to be said about a drunken wife. Here's all the drunken wives out there. So that's, that's my update on uh, the Oppenheimer. And when you see it, it'll dawn on you. You're like, look at this fucking woman. She can't handle it. And then you'll see it. Then you'll see what I said. Oppenheimer would have never beat three countries on his own. If it wasn't for his nagging fucking wife. Okay, now, Barbie movie. Uh, you might as well send me hate mail now, okay? Because I know you're not going to like this. But this is Freddie Rubino talking. The Barbie movie was touted. And all the women who come home go, oh, it was a great movie. Oh, it was such uplifting. It was sure women have power. They, they took over, and the 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 if you're going to put out there that this is in favor of women's rights and it's such a pro women's rights empowering woman's fucking movie, then they put some transgender guy in the movie. There's a transgender Bobby. They don't announce it, but you're looking, you go, whoa! You know? Ever go to a bar in Manhattan, you're like, hey, hey, how's it going? Whoa! There's a whoa moment in the movie. You're looking at whoa. So you see it. And then you think to yourself, if there's one fucking thing that has set women's rights back a hundred fucking years in this country, it's transgender rights. Transgender rights took the rights away from women. They don't have the right to go to the, have their own bathrooms. They don't have the rights to have their own sports. They don't have the right to not have someone expose them. They, they lost all those rights because now a guy can say he's a woman and take out his boom in front of a 10 year old. And now it's okay. Women have lost the right. They've lost the right to compete in sports. Women's sports. There's a whole fucking legislation for years. Women's right as a woman. You have the right to be protected. But trans rights have thrown all that out. And you got the balls to make a fucking movie about women's rights? 
and you put somebody trans in there? Doesn't make a fucking bit of sense. And I don't know how that, that flies with women's rights group. Okay? So right off the bat, it's bullshit. It's the disguise. The disguise of women's rights is to put the trans movement in there. When it's not, it's the fucking demise of women's rights. Giving men women's right. Giving men the right to supersede all of women's rights just because they say, I'm a girl too now. Okay, women has the right to privacy. Unless you're a guy and you say, I don't respect the privacy, I'm a, I'm a girl too. Then they lose it. They lose it like that. They lose the right to compete and get scholarships and go on to law school and to be fucking very successful people because they fucking lost their rights. Okay, that's the first thing about it. And now I'm going to do a little preaching. Women are very powerful. They don't need you to tell them that in order to be powerful, you have to be strong, you have to be ruthless, you have to be cunning. You get... No, no. The greatest power of a woman is to be a woman. That's your power. That's your power. Femininity is your power. No man, no straight man can resist a woman's femininity. Femininity? Feminine? Femininity. Alexa, how do you say femininity? Okay, but which language do you want me to translate I'm to? Alexa, I'm speaking English, you jackass! Hmm, I don't know that one. I'm off on Google, you know that one? Hey, fucking... Anyway, so the feminine, your femininity is the most powerful thing. And that's what they want to stop. They want to stop women being feminine, make them be strong, assertive, and that's taking power away from them, okay? The toughest guys in the world fall for girls, not because their heads are fucking shaved and wearing flannel. It's because they're so feminine and so, and girly, and you go, oh. That's their power. They can manipulate the strongest, the richest, the smartest man from their feminine, and that's their power. They're trying to strip girls and women of their femininity because they know you can't. There's no man that could say he's a woman and be more feminine than a woman. It doesn't work. Guys will do anything once they fall for that femininity. Anything. That's the whole thing. That's their whole power. Listen, let's go back, all the way back. Adam and Eve, okay? Adam and Eve. Adam on earth, all by himself. What happens? God sees it and goes, this guy's too fucking lonely. He needs, what did he do? He what? He needed a woman. Right there, it's telling you, God's telling you, women, men need you. Not because you're fucking playing for the girl's softball team. Or you're on the girl's basketball team with tattoos. Because when you're feminine, we need you. Or we wither and have a great time with our friends and go to AC and Vegas. But then, we need you. Do you understand? Adam and Eve. Adam was in the Garden of Eden with God and God created stuff right in front of Adam. Adam actually saw God creating. He created animals and then Adam had to name them. So Adam's standing there watching God whoop at a dirt, whoop a cow, whoop a giraffe, whoop a 
monkey. A uh, hippopotamus. A unicorn. Whatever. And 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 Adam is like, fuck it, look at this. It's me and God. He saw the awesomeness of God. But when Eve came on the scene, what did he do? God says, don't eat from that tree. Eve. Ah, these women. She was probably drunk like Oppenheimer's wife. Take the thing. He had Adam. No! But he couldn't resist Eve. He couldn't resist Eve, even though God himself, himself, and he saw God creating and his awesome power, couldn't resist Eve. Couldn't resist Eve. I was a fucking nice guy. I was a, I was happy. I was, I, I went to clubs with my friends, drinking, fighting, hockey, baseball. Ah, oh, having the time of my life, hanging out in the school. This pretty little thing comes by. Next thing I know, let me go get a job and come home and give you my money. And you run the house, and you can give me a couple of bucks so I can have a beer at lunch. That's what femininity does. It's a power. It's the girl's greatest power. Any girl. Listen, a girl from 1 to 10, a girl that's a 2, but is ultra feminine, is going to get a guy. Because we, it, it's irresistible. And that's why they want women... To be fucking manly. To lose their power. And that's what I got out of the fucking Barbie movie. Okay? They gave girls the wrong fucking message. Girls, you can do anything you want. You can get any job you want. Except physical because girls are physically in inferior than guys. It's biology. Fifth grade. Don't tell me. I was in fifth grade for a few years. I know fifth grade. Okay, so, but a woman's ability to uh, her, to wave her femininity and uh, control people and control a man is amazing power, amazing. So, Bobby movie, wrong message. Don't put a trans person in there and say it's from women's rights because the biggest threat to women is the trans movement. And let's have a fucking... And, 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 and all of it... You see, how Bob, Bobby's beautiful, right? Bobby's gorgeous. That's why Ken likes her. You think if fucking Lizzo was fucking Bobby, you would look at... You got common sense. You would look at that and go, get the fuck out of here. No, you wouldn't. You'd see that and go, what the fuck? is he doing? But beautiful goes out of her way to make herself more feminine. That's what her hairdo is. That's what her makeup is. That's what her dress is. That's what she's doing. Becoming feminine. The women's rights movement is a feminine movement. Feminists! Feminists are called feminists. It's for a fucking reason. Girls, be feminine. You could rule the world. You've been ruling the world since fucking the Garden of Eden. But femininity is the way to do it. Once they trick you into trying to be masculine instead of your beautiful feminine self, you're done. You're done. They want you to be in the locker room at 12 and see a guy with his dick hanging out and saying, it's okay. It's okay. I'm, it's my masculine side. No. No, it's not good. It's not right. And that's what I say about Bob. I'm very, very pissed at the message the Barbie movie gave out. Other than that, it was all right. And I'm Freddie Rubino. Go to fredrubino.com. I hope you enjoyed this. It's a little bit of humor mixed in with today's topics. Share it with your friends. Let me know what they think. Leave a comment. Let me know what they think. And I'll see you at my show this Saturday. This Thursday, I'll be at Villa Roma Italian American Resort up in um, Calicoon, Monticello, New York. I will be in uh, Jersey, Long Island, and all over Florida, fredrubino.com. Salute, everybody. I love you guys.